Warren Buffett is widely regarded as the most successful investor in the world, based on the amount of capital he started with and what he was able to grow it into. Commonly termed as the Oracle of Omaha, Buffett is now the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, an American multinational conglomerate. Following the principles set out by Benjamin Graham, he has amassed a multi-billion dollar fortune mainly through buying stocks and companies through Berkshire Hathaway. This 90-year-old investor reinvented value investing. He took it from pure bargain shopping to bargain shopping with a brain. Many have criticized him for avoiding tech companies and other industries, but by sticking to what he knows, he has been able to realize amazing returns. Love him or loathe him, when Warren Buffett speaks, people are all ears. He is quite possibly the greatest investor of all time, but today we are looking for some other investors, not named Warren Buffett, that are also considered to be the best of the best in the industry. So without any further ado, let's see 10 investors who have higher historical returns than Warren Buffett. Peter Lynch came into the scene in 1977 when he became head of the Fidelity Magellan, and during his time, the fund's assets grew from just $20 million to $14 billion. More importantly, Magellan funds reportedly beat the S&P 500 index benchmark for 11 years. He also coined the term multi-bagger stocks to describe stocks that can return multiples of an initial investment. When it came to stock picking, Lynch preferred to invest in companies he knew and understood. His bias was towards growth stocks, but he also adapted his approach to suit the phase the market was in at each point in time. Lynch retired in 1990 at the age of 46. Although his career was relatively short, the success of both his fund and his book have meant he is widely recognized as one of the greatest investors of the last 50 years. Michael Steinhardt achieved a track record that still stands out on Wall Street with 24% compound average annual returns over 28 years. What's more amazing is that Steinhardt did it with stocks, bonds, long and short options, currencies, and time horizons ranging from 30 minutes to 30 days. He is credited with focusing on the long term but investing in the short term as a strategic trader. When he was managing money, Steinhardt was not only a hedge fund pioneer but one of the first investors to embrace global macro strategies. Put simply, global macro traders find ways to profit from major trends in global markets. This entails long and short positions in all liquid asset classes. Though most of the hedge funds that have followed global macro strategies in recent decades have struggled to outperform, Steinhardt proved that it is possible and just how profitable it can be. Carl Icahn is known throughout the investing world as either a ruthless corporate raider or leader in shareholder activism. Just like the entertainment world has the Colbert bump, the world of investments has the Icahn lift. The Icahn lift describes the surge in stock price when Carl Icahn starts acquiring shares in a company. He tries to get on the board of directors by acquiring enough shares to vote himself in and then changes senior management to something he believes is more favorable to deliver solid results. He has had a lot of success with this over the past 30 years. From 1968 through 2011, ICANN grew his original $100,000 investment in his firm at a 31% annual rate, while Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway had only a 20% annual growth rate. This statistic doesn't offer a full picture of each investor's stock picks, but it's a meaningful point of comparison. Ray Dalio is the recently retired founder of Bridgewater Associates, the world's largest head fund management firm that managed $138 billion across three investment funds as of 2019. Although Dalio started Bridgewater in 1975, the firm's initial focus was on consulting to corporates and governments on currency and interest rate risks. Dalio is considered to be an asset allocation specialist and believes in the simple concept that over time asset classes will improve and will provide better returns than cash. He gauges the asset classes based on volatility, which has ultimately given consistent returns to his two major hedge funds, the All Weather Fund and the Pure Alpha Fund. George Soros is a Hungarian-born American business magnate and a prominent philanthropist. Born in Nazi-occupied Hungary, Soros immigrated to England in 1947 and became a student at the London School of Economics. He also worked as a railway porter and a waiter before starting his career in finance at a merchant bank named Singer and Friedlander in London. Before the Soros Fund management, he was employed at New York City-based FM Mayer Wortham & Co. and Arnold & S. Blaitroder, where he worked as vice president. 
constant. Unlike Buffett's slow and steady approach, Soros' strategy is to take bold yet very profitable bets. He is best known for his September 16, 1992 transaction when he made a single day gain of a billion dollars by short selling the British pound. In September 2016, Soros announced that his foundation would invest $500 million into companies founded by refugees and migrants, especially in Europe. There are very few investors who have not only succeeded in their investment pursuits, but also have successfully influenced multiple generations of investors at the same time. Any investor on this list cannot deny being influenced by Benjamin Graham. Despite experiencing poverty firsthand, he graduated from Columbia University on a scholarship and went on to work in Wall Street. By the age of 25, Graham was earning $500,000 annually in the 1920s. He excelled as an investment manager and financial educator. He authored two investment classics of unparalleled importance. The essence of Graham's value investing is that an investment should be worth substantially more than an investor has to pay for it. He believed in fundamental analysis and sought out companies with strong balance sheets or those with little debt above average profit margins and ample cash flow. Banking veteran John C. Bogle learned his investment and management skills by working for Wellington Management Company from 1951 to 1974. He then successfully founded one of the biggest investment firms in the world, the Vanguard Group, that now manages the approximately US $5.6 trillion in assets. He is often referred to as the king of index funds as he found the prominent trillion dollar asset manager Vanguard in 1975. Bogle has an extremely simple investment style. He he believes in putting money into low-cost index funds that have lower commissions and very little turnover of assets. That alone is a big reason why so many people trust him and his company with their money. Fortune magazine said that he is one of the four investment giants of the 20th century, alongside Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, and George Soros in 1999. Sir John Templeton was another top performing value investor with a similar approach to Warren Buffett. He is the creator of the modern mutual fund and he came to this idea by his own experience. It is believed that he made his first fortune by buying beaten down stocks during the Second World War. In 1939, he bought 100 shares of every company trading on the New York Stock Exchange below $1. He bought 104 companies in total for a total investment of $10,400 and though during the next 4 years, 34 of these companies went bankrupt, he was able to sell the entire remaining portfolio for $40,000. This gave him the realization of diversification and investing in the market as a whole. Templeton also launched some of the first sector and industry specific funds. Among these were funds that invested in nuclear energy producers and chemical and electronics manufacturers. Alan Meckham was sued by a local broker for having falsified his statements after the financial crisis. The broker didn't believe that Meckham could have made a positive return when the rest of the market fell around 50%, but the fact of the matter was that Meckham indeed did defy financial gravity. However, many people have not heard about him, since he's a shy investor. He never gives interviews, he hasn't written any books, and he's all in all very quiet. He has previously said that he fears attracting the wrong kind of investor if he is too much in the public eye. At 34 years old, the head of Arlington Value Management logged a 400% return over the 12 years to 2011, and he did it without an MBA or even a college degree, but being tapped as a baby Buffett may be the most dangerous compliment an investor can receive. Another investor who has been given the compliment of being the next Warren Buffett is an Indian American Monish Pabre. He sold his IT business and announced that he wanted to be a fund manager, which came as a big surprise to everyone around him. However, thanks to the bold move, today he is considered one of the best investors in the world. He focuses on classic value plays where he identifies companies that are like free lottery tickets, where the potential upside is big and where there is little risk of losing any money. Pabre's fund currently has three investments that we know of, Micron, Seritage Growth Properties, and Fiat Chrysler. There is a little catch though, as we can only see the American companies that he owns more than 10% of, since he tends to fly below the 10% threshold to avoid having to report it to the Securities and Exchange Commission.
thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.